Pull it to your brain, come on up and inside out. Live in La Vida Loca. Live in La Vida Loca. Good morning, y'all. It's Friday morning, damn. 23rd of July. Good morning, good morning. Let's uh, have this conversation. You're on my page, right? Rico and his opinions at it again. Damn. Ah, thank you, Mary Max, for this. It comes in handy, girl. Appreciate you. Okay, let's get it started. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? Woo, come on in. All right, this is my cool down cover. Just run out. I guess I don't have a time. I'm going to have to time this. That a full two, three miles? I don't know. It just makes me sweat. Like we're trying to escape from somewhere. I got to run through a lot of bushes and hedges. So, anyway... Uh, let me go ahead and do what's called house cleaning. If y'all hadn't heard yet, and no one has spread the word to you yet, but uh, uh, I have this short story that uh, that's always for sale because we're always talking about fatherhood and fatherlessness in our community. But really, and there's also an American issue. But you no, know, let's, let's be more specific and talk about us sometimes here. And uh. Children growing up without their fathers because a lot of times the moms are not being really truthful about or, or forthcoming, that's the word, with, uh, with the identity of who your dad really is. This can happen to girls too. You know, it happens to black girls and black boys. But uh, my short story talks about when I was 22 years old and I found out by accident, just by a mere casual conversation with an auntie who uh, passed away a few years ago. And uh, and she uh, spilled the beans. I guess it was the family secret, one of the family secrets. And uh, I got a chance to get this information and find out about him. Called him, but he never wanted to meet me. I let we'll let fate handle that. That's what he always said. So years later, at age 39, December 25th, 2008, I decided to take it upon myself to hey, you know, damn all this. At least I can do a suit this SOB looks like. And so I Googled his name and all that stuff, like five addresses came up and and I picked one and it happened to be the one that went and knocked on the door. And he's like, oh, what's up? I like, hey, what's up? So he asked me, how did you find me? I said, Google map, map question, all that. That's how I got directions. He said, well, I have to give you an A for effort because I've worked aggressively over the years to prevent you from ever finding me. So that's, uh. So, 22 to 39 years old talks about the story, and if, you like, if you're interested in hearing about the story, we're reading it, all the stuff, the twists and turns, and, and uh, all the cool, all, well, all the stuff that goes on, the 22 to 39, in that particular, during that particular experience. It's only $10, it's in PDF form. You can hit me with the cash app, Rico the Opinionist, or dollar sign, Rico the Opinionist, or PayPal. And if, should you decide to, Send it ten dollars. Please send an email address so I can mail you, uh, mail you, email you. I'm sorry, email you your PDF copy. It comes in a PDF form, so you can take it wherever you wherever you are on your phone, laptop, desktop, desktop, all of that. Cool. So check it out. Uh, it's always on sale. Anytime you want to get it, just. Hit me with that cash up, dollar sign, Rico the Opinionist, O P I N I O N I S T. And there's also Rico the Opinionist on YouTube channel. And uh, so share, subscribe, subscribe, share. This Facebook post right now, this live, share it, please. 
if you want to. If you think anyone else could benefit from this information that I'm going to impart for those of you who are checking in who may listen to the playback later. Because it's Friday, y'all. Let's get to it. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to uh, throw out there before I get to the main two topics. Charvis, you still on? What's up? Uh, anyway, this whole thing about, uh, let me do this one first. The other one's going to take me a minute. I want to start off with something light. No, it ain't light to, to men who are trying to get married. So if y'all heard, I'm sure if you haven't been living under a rock, Dr. Dre, legendary producer, rapper, one of the founders of the NWA, and the Chronic, classic Chronic CD album, what have you. Beats by Dre, billion dollars earned with that little sale trade, what have you. Has to pay his wife of 22 years. She wanted half of his billion dollar fortune. <laughs> I don't understand how she thought she earned that. But, like Richard Pryor said, Betray told one joke. And guess what? What's her name? Nicole Young, you never came up with one beat. But still, listen, fellas. These, these, that damn American laws of marriage. I know we try to push it, but it just doesn't pay as the man to get married when he has money. Your best out is to marry while you're still poor. Because when you get money, you have to damn near give it all to her. And they're going to have to change the laws. I think that it's getting so bad that they're even trying to make prenups null and void now. You can, you can protect your money. And some jackass judge said, well, you know, uh, uh, we, we're not going to uh, hear that argument uh, in my courtroom. Ah. Uh, and just throw out this legal document that you took the time to have drawn up. And so, now I find this very interesting that when she was trying to get at him, he was winning and she was shut down. Then all of a sudden he had, he, I don't know, he had this what, aneurysm, uh, heart, uh, heart attack. He uh, was in the hospital. And remember this bra went to, the, went to his sick bed. And had him to sign what's called temporary payments while he was sick. What kind of monster does that? What kind of monster does you go to a man while he's sick? Try to get him to sign some damn, I'll just say marital or divorce papers or uh, month papers to get you paid. Rhonda Mitchell, good morning. This shit is weird. And so it's like he it, she caught him in his weekend state. That's why I was like, fellas, take care of yourselves. Yeah. And so now, since so she could get, couldn't get half of the billion, some beta male or some feminist judge thought it was okay to award this heifer three point what five million I mean, three point five million in all a year, but it's three hundred thousand dollars a month in alimony. Do y'all think that she could have made that on her own in her lifetime? You know. Now, she gets to make this money until she decides to, I guess, get remarried or something. But, of course, she's not going to get married. But guess what? Not a woman on the planet going to have nothing to say about this. Too tough. Good morning. Yes, yeah, she does. That's right, Rhonda. She does deserve a penny. But... But every man and woman was going in on the ex-husband of Sherry Shepard, the ex-husband of Halle Berry, ex-husband of Mary J. Blige, when they were paying him like, what, 30000 20000 a month? He need to get a job. He ain't no real man. A man don't take no money from a woman. But you think Nicole Young going to say, you know what, I'm a woman. I don't need no $300,000 a month. I, hell, I, I only got that lifestyle because I was with him. On my own, I was just a half hard faced, light skinned chick. I wasn't making that kind of money. Hell, I wasn't even making 5000 a month. And like Chris Rock said, when they throw out the argument, well, I've grown accustomed to this lifestyle. Chris Rock said in a joke, well, I've grown accustomed 
to having sex with her at least three times a week, Your Honor. Can we continue with that? See, you, you match logic with foolishness. <laughs> so, these judges are okay with awarding these large sums of money to women, but the, but the country comes down on any man, any man, black, white, or whatever, who gets chance to get just a pinch of a little justice out of these divorce laws. And, and that Aubrey Halle Berry's husband, I mean, she was so pissed about it. She got it argued down from what, 20,000 to what, eight, 9,000 a month? That's still pretty good. If he's smart, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I only go dancing with chicks and make sure I wear a condom and all that until little Nala, whatever her name is, gets, gets 18 years old, then I'll go back out there. I'll stack that cheese up. Because I don't understand. How can a judge in his right mind, regardless of how much money the husband made, worked his ass off? The husband makes the money. Women don't make no damn money. He made the money. He made it. He, he started as a teenager with a rap group and, and even had to wear like glitter stuff with that world wrecking crew. Turn off the light. That little song that they had out there. Remember that with Michelle A was singing? And uh, uh, he did all this. Then he got a chance to get the plug. Got, got in with the beats and all of that. The man made his money. And so, and she's, whoever thinks this is appropriate, you're out, you're out of line. Whoever thinks this judgment is appropriate, you are out of line. And guys, y'all need to pay attention to this stuff. They you know, talking about me and I ain't marrying you anymore. Y'all see why? This didn't help. So you young ladies out there thinking y'all for the married dudes, you, you better get him and wait, work at the post office. Because you guys that make 300000 plus more, don't y'all be marrying these old broke-ass people. Or don't marry. And, and make sure, how about this? Make sure you, you look at the, uh, the child support laws and the divorce laws in whatever state you plan to marry in. I think the safest place to probably get married in is Mexico. Their laws are a little different. But you're trying to get damn near... More than half these 50 states, your ass is grass should she decide to file for divorce. Because 80% uh, of the marriages are filed. Divorces are filed by the women. Because they get in there. That's okay. I did my five years, my 10 years. Janet Jackson did it. She went in there, get five years, a million dollars a year or something, however, whatever it was. It's just a shame. This humanity and the love between human beings in this country is just gone. It's dead out of there. And so I'm telling you, being single is not a sin. And uh, fellas, just be careful who you impregnate, that's all. And be careful who you marry. Because uh, And you know the homosexual community, <laughs> they had to learn the hard way. You know what, marriage ain't all that. While they fought for the right to marry, get married, I mean, they clowned and manipulated and shamed and guilted the entire country for years. Then when they got the right to marry, they started marrying all at one time on that day. Not even a year later, divorces started popping off. So, aha, uh -huh. y'all thought this shit was gravy, but I don't think they really wanted to get married. I think they just wanted to stick it to the mainstream society, those who they believe were against LGBT and all that. That's what all that shit is about. Y'all don't want that. Y'all do not want that smoke. Y'all see heterosexual people getting divorced. What makes you think y'all love is any stronger than regular people? Get the fuck out of here. Cause when you live with somebody, you get sick of their ass. It don't matter if you're gay or straight. You just sick of their ass, or they sick of you. <laughs> so they found out. You know what? We don't really like each other like that. Uh, our patterns don't match, and those drapes have to go. And I can't sit through that bathroom decor another goddamn week. Okay, and so they break the divorce. <laughs> so they're breaking, they're divorcing, they're breaking up. All I'm saying, so all this is a game. And Dr. Dre, man, I'm sorry that that happened to you, bro. It's terrible, and don't let it. Don't. That's okay though. But one thing about it, you're a man, and you have earning potential. You're gonna be all right. You gonna, they ain't gonna miss that little money, cause somebody gonna come at you with a deal that that will uh, supplement that little. 3.2 million dollars she gonna get for nothing. For nothing.
And so any dude, any man that's famous and, and divorced a chick that's also rich, <clears throat> you know, get that money. Yeah, get it. And I never, I, I have never ever talked down on a man who's married to a celebrity female and he got that 20000 a month or that 30000 So, you know, I, I don't play that. Nope. Because women get it just automatically because of their gender. Not because they because I don't know any chick that ever deserved it. No twenty thousand, three hundred thousand, forty thousand a month, just because he worked his ass off and, and and created something from his own natural talents. It don't make no damn sense. Now they can work something out. She could have gotten like you know a little, you know, got fifty million dollars and moved on. This greedy broad wanted half of this man's fortune. She didn't participate in none of that shit. She could have took that little fifty million and moved on by her damn life. But I'm telling you, they, these older bras are worse than these young chicks. These real housewives and all these hip hop shows. They're trying to emulate the foolishness on TV, and everybody want to live that lifestyle. Even these old poor ass, broke ass girls in the ghetto thinking they. <sighs> trying to hold all these these weird ass rituals like they do on TV in their own lives. That stuff costs money. And then what they don't understand is all that lavish and stuff that they see in these with these little hood raggedy ass chicks with weave are doing on these love and hip hop, black ink, marriage and mental illness, and all these shows to producers and the networks pay for that stuff. Those people can't afford that. Did I have to tell these people that that truth? The producers of the shows, the networks, pay for that. But anyway, Dr. Dre, it's going to be all right, man. Bring out the Chronic 2 or whatever and then and get all that little money back. So, yeah, you got you one. You get a lick that time, Nicole, y'all. I never met you, but hope I never meet anybody like you. All right. Let me move on. This vote of suppression. All right. You know what? Let me tell y'all something. I'm going to speak slowly. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. Understand. They've been talking about voter suppression since, what, the election was over. And, and they always get black people, the masses, stirred all up. They're trying to suppress our vote. They're trying to suppress our vote. You know, I'm so glad that I've always been the one who've always led, my, led myself I always, I've always done my own thinking. I've never gotten into that group think. Because groups get led to slaughter. Independent individual thinkers get to process stuff a little more before they make decisions. And I say that because I'm like, well, let me look into this shit. Because they got all these Negro celebrities. Vote on suppression. And they, they create all these new activists. <laughs> that they fly around in private jets, give them Cadillac commercials. All these so-called activists non-active network or Al Sharpton's whatever program, you got all this shit. I said, how are you an activist and you fly in first class? Oh, we need to go. All, all on CNN. Sorry. <laughs> CNN, MSNBC. Flying, pushing around and putting these so-called black activists. I'm like, come on. Y'all do the history of this country. You know what a black activist is. Fatty Lou Hamer was a black activist. You ever known and read the history of Fannie Lou Hamer being flown around in a private jet to go to a march? No, well she was thrown, she was thrown in jail. And she was unknowingly, on purpose, made sterile so she couldn't have more children. And some Kwame Brown said it made a lot of sense. They said, damn, y'all attacking me. And I'm talking about putting codes in schools, coding uh, trades in schools. Child coming Kwame Brown. And I'm talking about uh, getting trades back to back, back in schools to black boys and, and getting coding for the black kids. And motherfuckers harassing him. I mean, physically harassing him. But the so-called actors are supposed to be risking the world. get phone in. They're getting TV commercials. I mean, by corporate America. Y'all buying into this shit? And all they do is sit around and... Bump, bump their gums on all the daytime talk shows. These are the activists now. Did y'all know Malcolm X ever was flown in a private jet any goddamn well? You ever know Malcolm X ever stand in a four-star, five-star hotel as they went out to give a speech on black men and black women and, black and voter suppression? 
Come on, y'all. All this shit is a game. It's a game. If you've read history in, in, in high school, you understand. There was no pumping stands going on. These people, these people went out in the streets or they went, they went to their tanks. They went to their, their airplane, their bomber planes. They went out and fought. They grabbed their bows and arrows. There was no, shame on you for pre mistreating me. Shame on you for mistreating me. That's all they do. Then they go and get, the, get their speaking fees. And our actual black activists... Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Amos Wilson, and others. Dale Jones, shout out to Dale Jones, Steve Coakley, our actual activists. They died poor because they weren't white corporate sponsored. Like all them black folks that appear on CNN and your Tamika Mallory's and all these, all these yelling and screaming and microphones that somebody else paid for. Y'all, y'all catching on now how, how blacks are just made just a fool of? This ain't no goddamn activism. I mean, and all of them get to live to be 80 years old. The real activists don't make it to 39. Rest in peace, Dr. King. Well, Dr. King from 60, uh, like 66 to 68. So, y'all, these people are playing games. They're not any real activists. Black Lives Matter thing should have told everybody. Made a fool out of everybody, not me. Made a complete jack, a donkey of the day out of black America. Had y'all to vote for this senile old fool up there. And the first thing he did was all homosexual laws, Asian laws, none for the Negroes. But yet, you black Biden sexuals have nothing to say about this man who is clearly, like we said a year ago, clearly not showing, has signs of dementia. <laughs> but y'all go ahead and sit in your silence of denial. You don't, want, you, want, you don't want to hear I told you so. Well, at least we got Trump out of there. Y'all keep on believing that. Keep believing that, stupid asses. And black men who vote for Biden, I'm still looking at you side eye. And vote for Kamala Harris, I'm still looking at you side eye. That shit is weird. Black men, straight black men voting for a Democrat? Are y'all kidding me? What laws, what policies have they ever put out that act to benefit masculine, heterosexual black men and black boys? Ever. Voter suppression. What are y'all talking about? So I had to go and do some reading. I said, what exactly are they trying to suppress? We got the goddamn United States Constitution. You got the Voting Rights Bill. I mean... You got these white gay liberals, Democrats, and black gay Democrats, and women Democrats, and effeminate Democrat men. We need to stop these Republicans. These Republicans are going to be the end of black folks. And the people who have been taking rights every day from black folks, not Republicans, but the people they follow blindly, it's called Democrats, dumbass. Vote for who you want to, I'm just telling you what the observations are for me. They're the ones who are taking your right. Your right to succeed. Your right to, to go out there unless you're a black female or a gay. <laughs> or a black, little black girl. They don't ever push black boys unless he's gay or black Greek. God damn it, Rico, you said it again. Well, keep saying it till you, till you hear me. Uh, so, having said that. What exactly are they suppressing? Because they can't suppress the black vote. What do you mean suppress? Are y'all saying suppress or end the black vote? Because see, y'all, we need to pay attention to words. Suppress or completely end it. See, my concern is ending the black, ending the vote. They can't end the vote. So, what y'all complain about, y'all got these hired blacktivists, these corporate sponsored activists, these Democratic Negroes got y'all riled up over some goddamn suppression? Come on. We can't be this fucking slow. Come on. <sighs> so they said, well, we're going to change the time of voting. Oh, no. I don't have seven days out of the week that I can pick a day. <laughs> Stupid. Well, you can't get nobody water bottles in the line. Oh, no, I'm going to die of starvation. I mean, uh, what's that? What do you call this shit when you don't have any water? 
<laughs> I'm gonna die of not being uh, of of okay. I'm gonna die of parchedness while standing in line. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Black Americans have been made like children in this country. Black Americans have been made like children. It's so embarrassing how weakened we've become. How we've allowed a political group to make this just fodder for the country. Who gives a shit about not being able to have a water, you know, someone walking around giving everybody water bottles? God damn it. Get your own water bottle and keep it on your person. It's time to go in there. It's time to, um, okay. Uh, I was just reading what Mary Max said. She said people need to send money to Dr. Claude Anderson, his Harvest Institute, for the work he has done on behalf of black people. Yeah, they do. Shout out to Dr. Claude Anderson. And so, and then they said, well, you know, they're making it harder because they're making, um, people, requiring people to have IDs. Who in the hell in a civilized country, civilized uh, society, does not have some form of ID? They're making it hard for felons to vote. Well, God damn it, that's where the black attorneys come in and get them, get, expunge their records and stop getting felonies, uh, black dudes. And I know stuff happens, but we're going to have to become more conscious if we believe we live in a racist country. We need to start acting like it. That's how it is. We have your stuff together. Have it, everything. You know, if you drive it, drive it like all this shit. ID, state ID. I think in Texas costs, what, 30 bucks? 20, 30 bucks. And these same people with no ID have on $250 Jordans, uh, $150 Gucci belt. And they buy three to $500 bundles of weave. It's called priorities. Nobody should be without a goddamn ID if not a driver's license. It's like 20 bucks. So please, and they've all, and this damn party has convinced black people that they're the poor people of America. So they have to be uh, looked after and, and taken care of. Oh, it's embarrassing. Voter suppression. We mean, you got black folks riled up over some simple shit like that. I mean, I mean, the Democrats in Texas have even, you know, they've even just made just this grand theatrical exit from the state. All this theater. It's theater. And I don't give a shit. And now so all of a sudden they throw in that, you better get vaccinated. They got, now they all got COVID. It's all weird. It's weird. You know, we should be worried about if they cut it off. And that's a whole constitutional thing there. But let me tell y'all something that we didn't think about. And I said it before, and I'm going to say it again to folks who may not have ever heard me speak before. I don't give a shit about them fucking uh, voter suppression. Who cares about suppression? Because whatever, when, when slaves, when Africans were free, uh, allegedly freed from slavery, they didn't have shit. Let alone a right to vote. But you know, they did everything they could to, I guess, I guess back then, suppress the vote. They add these questions and added all of that and all that. I get it. I get that. But it, that can't be done now. They, they had to answer questions before uh, they were allowed to come in and read. You know, watch the movie Selma. It talks about a little of that. But it's been modernized. So today, I like to think, well, we've, we've, seen, we've seen the numbers. A lot of black folks, a lot of people can't read. And how come voter suppression has become a black thing? Can y'all answer me that? I'm going to get to this other point in a minute. Get back to it. But how come voter suppression has become um, been, you know, a, a, a black thing? You don't see any Mexican leaders out there talking about, well, you know, they're trying to suppress our right to vote. You don't hear any white folks out there talking about some. They're trying to um, suppress white people's right to vote. How come it's always all this stuff, the attacks are always uh, framed as an attack on black people? Like, we just uh, just uh, the throwaway dumbass... Uh, just unrefined. <laughs> we just like we just re throw away kids, and that's how. And then when people handle us like that, talk to us like that, we get upset. Hell, that's how we behave. And we don't need to fuck that. We gonna get our people out the boat. They got ID. Uh, they taught their sons and daughters not to go out here and get felonies. Hell, let them know if you get a felony, that's your ass. What what happened to us? Our people didn't have the right to breathe. 
and they fought, I guess, to get that right to vote. But again, it was corporate sponsored, so they didn't do it right. They got the amendment or that little voting rights bill. No, they, that was the wrong thing to get. See, did y'all know that full Americans don't have a bill? We keep calling these Negroes, we're talking about they're Americans. Well, Americans have full voting rights. And those leaders that they uh, celebrate today, Andrew Young and all those folks, old ne civil rights, bought off Negroes, they're all in their 80s now. Late 70s and early 80s now. Some of them in their 60s, hitting the 70s. They all, you know, they didn't do that right. See, instead of fighting for civil rights, somebody, a homosexual by the name of Bayard Rustin, talked Dr. King and, him and all them into going for nonviolence and civil rights. Then before then, Roy Wilkins and all his folks went to the White House with the foolishness. Civil rights. Which y'all should have been fighting for what other foreign countries fight for. Their people, they want human rights. See, civil rights is for, look, give us a little something to show you that you civilized with us. Human rights makes me an equal human being, period. See, white Americans and immigrants in this country have full human, full American rights. <laughs> you don't hear no, ever hear any immigrant talking about no damn voting. Because they don't, they don't do it. They just come here and take advantage of the free education and all that stuff. Well, not, you know, the available education and keep it moving. And so I don't understand how we get sucked into these old, I call them faux movements. We should be concentrating on, and it's something that occurred to me 25 years ago. You know, because every 25 years, Congress and the Senate have to agree on renewing the civil rights or the voting rights of blacks in this country. And that, that never raised a red flag for all you black folks that we consider ourselves Americans. Americans don't hold, have their voting rights or any rights voted on every 25 years. See, and I remember 25 years ago, and they sent out their Negro Democrats, their Negro liberals, black liberals, to tell black people, we need to fight for this. They tried to stop our boots and this. And Republicans were like, how about we do away with that, period? Nobody ever tells the full truth. <sighs> say what you want to say about a lot of Republicans. But they actually be trying to help black folks come up. But see, the gatekeepers of the black community understand that they don't get no check if black people are actually all the way free and human. People make money off of suppression. People make money off of poverty. And they all, they're not all white anymore. It's a lot of black people who made a great living and continue to make a great living off of the ignorance of their own people. They understand this system is. It's about numbers and the education of a people. And you have all these people that y'all, I don't care, you name anybody, I'm going to tell you, they bought off. Name them. Just go ahead. See, Malcolm understood. That's why he had to leave. Dr. King finally got a clue at the end. Fanny Lou Hamer understood all the way through. You know, the Black Panthers knew. But see, those aren't the activists that y'all see on TV all day long getting receiving corporate checks from these white entities to have them to say certain black things to, you know, I guess piss off the white establishment. But see, uh, an establishment is already established, and they know that won't cause no threat to us. They may cause a little, what's called a few hours of discomfort, but you ain't going to tear this system down. It's already built. It's solidified. And so you got all these little Negro talking heads getting paid to tell y'all how y'all being oppressed. God damn, what a fool we are. They know they hire everybody. And they, I mean, they give them shows. Y'all know it's all of them on MSNBC and CNN and all. But the ones who tell you the truth, they don't hire them. They don't even have them on. Even the black guests don't even have you on. The black hosts don't have you on the show and tell the truth. Like, yeah, we're talking about facts. No, you're not talking about facts. What you're doing is spreading propaganda to a people who, don't, who have gotten out of reading and gotten out of having standards and expectations in our race. And so voices like mine, and if a young person, they're not being celebrated. They're pushing them to the back. And so having said that, people who are free don't have their rights voted on every 25 years. Well, I need to say that again to all the smart people in the back. A free American, a whole 100% American does not have voting rights voted on every 25 years. 
And I remember 25 years ago, maybe longer than that, they, they were talking about that. And it never dawned on me, why the hell do we have to have this done every 25 years if we're supposed to be Americans? And then we just totally ignored the three-fifths thing. I mean, it's just, this shit is stupid. They're going to put us back in slavery. Jail is new slavery. Well, it's documenting crimes. Do what you can and stay out of it. You know, on all aspects. Yeah, jail is shit. And that's how it should be told to young people. But they hire black rappers. They hire the black rappers to let it know. Oh, it ain't that. I just laid down did that little time, man. You know damn well that ain't nothing but a, a slip. A jail, a prison ain't nothing but a brothel. A satanic, disgusting brothel. When they go in there and the men are animals. They turn to be turned into animals and broken down into the least molecule of a human being. And there are people who don't deserve to be there, of course. But, uh, hold on a second, let that trickle. We're going to have to understand what this thing means. Start using our analytical and critical thinking. How about we start going back and read what the scholars taught us? Because what this woke shit, these people are stupid. These so-called woke activists, they're dumb. They don't have that bunch of emotion and a couple of stats. They're not very bright. Because the scholars of the 50s and the 60s who were there, there, who were there, they were writing from what they saw, what they experienced, they understood it right then and there. Brilliant people. But they weren't going to study them. Now, I keep throwing out some of the names. There's more out there. But Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, all these folks, they were doing the work. And there's others out there. Dr. Ben Yakahanan, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima, Dr. Naeem Akbar, Dr. Jawanza Kunjufu. They're out there. Now, and most recently, you have Dr. Joy Leary. You have a lot of scholars who told us, made us really smart and understand the white supremacy. Brother Neely Fuller. They have the books, they have the videos, but we will not tell a 15-year-old, go check this out. Or tell a freshman in college, don't listen to what these woke divists are talking about. Go see what the scholars said about this shit. And then bring yourself back up. Because right now, these, these woke divists, all they do is yell and scream. And you see the woke divists are mainly females and, and gay men. Because the masculine men think for themselves. You no, know, this is bullshit. I'm not finna get in here and start yelling in front of the police. Ain't nobody gonna get me out of jail. And then the women get a chance to go on and book deals and shit. Not all, but too many. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, I'm gonna say this again. Full Americans don't have their voting rights voted on every 25 years. And so what Republicans were talking about 25 years ago... I read, I was checking out the news. As always, we need to stop the Republicans. They're suppressing the vote. Who gives a shit about suppression? God damn it, they're going to take the right to vote away. Do you understand? No. And what black folks need to do is get some real attorneys, some real politically minded blacks, and say, hey, I tell you what, take that 25 years and just give us flat out actual, make us full American. That should be the movement. But see, again, they hire these Negro gatekeepers to tell y'all, we need to keep our right to vote. That's the prison. Suppressing our right to vote. I'm so sick of the stupidity. And I'm just like, man, well, I need to go to therapy so I can quit thinking about us like that and, and try to get like some of these, these Negroes who just go to work, keep their head down, don't say nothing about nothing. They make their money. They live in gated communities, got nice cars and, you know, like, damn, why I have to be conscious? I tell you, that shit, ugh. Sometimes it keeps you angry, keeps you broke. Like, I hate this shit. Then you say stuff like this, no goddamn well, it's gonna come bring back consequences. You know, go cheese. Yeah, and I said, damn, now I know what Jesus felt like. I know what Malcolm felt like. I know what family, everybody that, that told the truth out loud or speak against what is considered the norm. Yeah, there's consequences. They come in many forms. It doesn't always end in death and shit like that. Isolation or then you put it on video. They put it in books and lectures. So, and people are like, well, I don't know. I'm going to put it with him because he's so anti. No, I'm just anti-bullshit. 
That's all. And I'm not an angry, mean dude. Anyone who knows me in person, though, I, I get down and clown and fun like anybody else. But when it comes to really just speaking out about what I see, yes, I'm going to tell it. It's like we, I think a lot of us know, but we've chosen the strategy of silence. We want other people to stick their necks out for us instead of us doing it. We should do it, not just one person, one person taking a load of 30 million blacks. Who does that? Call it the Jesus Christ syndrome. We always want somebody else to get near to the cross while nobody while we get to continue to have what we have and do what we do and continue to make money and live and all that shit while somebody else get to say what you can say on your own out loud. Well, you know, I got my job I'm trying to keep. You don't think people who are speaking out got jobs they want to keep? We well, you know I got my family. You don't think they have family? Dr. King had a family, Malcolm X had a family, Mega Evers had a family. What fuck y'all talking about? Jesus even had a family. It's a secret. Just found out later. But anyway. So that excuse doesn't done, done fly. Hell. But y'all talk. Yeah, they was great men. They was this. You know, that shit is weird. Cowards. If, if everybody came together in one voice instead of sections of voices that's paid by corporate, white corporate America, this shit would work. And all these different subgroups in our race, you got the Christians, you got the Muslims, you got the Black Greeks, you got the non-Greeks, you got all these different different subsections. You got the gays, you got the non. -gays. All these subsections can't come together to make one mighty blow with one mighty fist. Can't do that. And you got the black women, and then black men are like, oh shit, I'm just trying to live. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, black men. We haven't formed a group. I'd say that. We haven't. We just cause we, we still act like men. We don't change. We know we got to get up, go to work, eat, to eat, and to live. See, women have the luxury of they ain't got to do nothing but be pretty. Because some man who gets up and go to work will pay her way. That's why I can't take women activism seriously because they still women. And if they find or some man thinks she's pretty, she, she ain't never got to work. And I don't know why we keep ignoring that fact. But a man of any form has to get up and go out and create something and work. Nobody's giving a man shit. Now, it depends on what kind of, what kind of man you are, though. Now, if you like a light-skinned dude, look biracial with hazel eyes, and uh, you uh, got a mug shot in jail, they refer to him as prison bay, women will do stuff for you. Even if, you, uh, if you're the what's called the BET, described black male, kind of thuggish, kind of slumpish, Broken English, not mean, and you know, oh, ooh, yeah, he's sexy. Well, he ain't got to do too much. So, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Y'all quit playing these games. And, and uh, I'm going to get a t shirt. You know, maybe it's for strictly for conversation, but uh, hell, I'm, I've begun to believe this. It says, I don't vote for women. Because whenever, but it's been my experience, my observation, all these women that's been elected in political office, they never have anything, no agenda for black boys and black men. Never. I'll debate anybody on that. And, then, <laughs> and, and all, I ain't got to debate you. You show me the proof that they do. Any woman that you, that you voted for, unless she was a conservative black woman, black people don't vote for conservatives. So your Democratic black female, <laughs> she, she ain't never, she's never ever had anything on her agenda, political agenda, that benefited black boys and black men. As always, women and children, immigrants and gays. You can call me a liar all you want to, but you'll be in denial and you'll be a liar. That's why my little t-shirt is going to say, I don't vote for women. Not in these days, hell no. And I certainly don't vote for Democrats no more. I know what their agenda is. Gay, lesbian, uh, immigrants, Women and children, black boys and black men. Black men are left out of the equation. And black men need to get some intelligence, some political intelligence. Stop playing these games. You knew that. You know what? You know that black men are hell. When you got a United States Congresswoman of 40 years come out and, and attack a particular group of black men because we jumped off the Democratic plantation, Maxine Waters. You don't know what he was. I'll never forgive you. All because me, we, the 17%, decided not to vote for this, this liar and this whore. This racist and this whore. Because we know their policies against black men. 
and she brought used her huge platform, her global platform, to attack those 17% of black men. And that didn't send this red flag to other heterosexual masculine black men that <laughs> it could be you next if you dare say out loud, I'm not voting Democrat. See, well, you're not, I'm going to use Kwame Brown's slogan. If you, if you decide not to no longer be a part of the go along, get along gang, that's how you get treated. Steve Coakley referred to his day gatekeepers and members of the boule or Allah gatekeepers, meaning they're the ones who stand at gate to make sure you don't get to the white power structure. So they say, no, no, tell me. I tell him. No, what is, what's the problem? I go and tell him. See, they stand at the beginning of the steps of Master's house and ask you, so where you going? I, don't, I ain't come to see you. No, no, he told me, if you got something to say, tell me and I'll go take it to him. That's what, that's what you mean by gatekeepers. And they get paid to keep you in the dark. So, so uh, so I wake up, see, uh, I wake up to my man speaking back in the morning, Paul. Uh, Mary Max, yeah, the political women of today are not like the black female politicians of old. That's right. There's no Barbara Jordans here today. Thank you, Mary Max. There's no Barbara Jordans. There's no, what's that lady name? Oh, my God. She's Shirley Chisholm's. These bras are bought and owned by white massa. Because look at a lot of them are bald here. A lot of them wear weave. A lot of them wear this short, blonde ass cut looking like, oh, God, this shit is so ugly. It's ugly. Talk about the chicks in the ghetto wearing the purple and and lime and yellow weave. What about these so-called intelligent, so-called intelligent, articulate black women? They shave their head and color the motherfucker blonde. Who you think is sexually attracted to you? Or well, takes you seriously? I don't. When I see that physical disfigurement, tattoos, and weird-ass colored hair, yes, I judge and I move on. I can't take you seriously. It's not gonna happen. It's guys too. Like, dude, what's what's with all the dumbass tattoos on your neck and? All this shit, he ain't got good sense. Judging book by cover my ass. So the thing is, we're gonna have to become more intelligent black folks and black men, we're gonna have to lead the way, but we gonna have to, do, we have a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do with each other. We gonna have to have that drag out, cuss out, fight out, shut the, come in there and shut the door and just go ahead and, and hash this shit out so we can become a political group. And I'm gonna say this, this is not anti our women, anti anything, it's for us. Because one thing, if you don't understand the nature of man, if you understand the nature of who God is, to all the religious folks out there, it is for a man to be the hunter, gatherer, protector, provider. You can't be that by, by walking under the skirt of your women, fool. One was never put that, was never created to be in charge of shit. And if she was in charge of something, they call it the island of Lesbos. They call them Amazonian. They all lived around each other. <laughs> but the man was created. And every other group is exemplifying this behavior except for black men because due to the fact that the war will always be Europe versus Africa, they know that every man knows that the power structure is in the male. So that's why they've always worked over, way over 200 years to make sure the black male never grows up into a viable component. Or what is it? What is it? A viable. Yeah, that's right. I think I said the right word. Is it? Is it? Viable competition or opponent. Viable opponent. My bad. See, talking fast. A viable opponent. Competition. One who can actually cause a threat. Because look at these little black boys now. They're so angry and emotional. They took systematically took the ass off. They paid black women to keep the men out. They paid black women to keep men out. And guess what? Look at these women. Don't have a problem with having a bastard child by herself because she's still being funded by white zaddy. The ghost of Lyndon Baines Johnson is still creeping around the black race. Y'all not listening. <sighs> and they still doing it. And then they stand there about dumb behinds on TV and be proud. Well, black women, I, we are this black women are making moves. Y'all ain't made shit. Y'all been giving donations to dominate your men. And a lot of brothers see this. They're like, well, you know what? Y'all go ahead and have each other. We don't give a shit. Go. Black men need to stand up and blah, blah, blah. No. We understand that a lot of our women are under hypnosis and that, that spell can't be broken. A lot of stuff that's going on, you know, 
and so that's going on, the only they can change. But they refuse to because the money's too good, the political power's too good. <laughs> uh, Claude said, man, drink some more water and uh, gather yourself. You're on a roll this morning. I did. I took a sip before we started, bro. And so, but thank you, man. I, I just walked past my water tooth. Mm. And so, the thing is, you know, we're going to get it together. As, uh, what's his name, the booty warrior would tell the new guys coming in jail, we're going to do it the easy way or we're going to have to do it the hard way. Either way, it's going to be done. Or well, it has to be done. <laughs> Woo! Man. You know, so, again, voter suppression. Y'all, come on now. Don't, 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 don't get riled up over that bullshit. What we need to be riled up is, how come we have to still have our voting rights voted on every 25 years? That should be the, the debate. That should be the frenzy, the craze that's going on. And stop letting these corporate-sponsored blacktivists and wokeivists make a fool out of you. And who gives a shit whether or not they teach race, critical race theory in the pub fucking public schools? Who cares? Don't you have a bookstore? Don't you have books? Don't you know it, know how to read to teach your own damn children? White folks be trying to help blacks. White folks be trying to help blacks. Like, do it yourself. That's all they do. It's like we get offended when white people tell you to do it yourself. Like, we get offended. If they kick you out of something, they're telling you, go get your own restaurant. If they don't let you in that neighborhood, they say, go build your own neighborhood. And Negroes let these these corporate sponsored blacktivists, oh my god, they're discriminating against because of the color of my skin. Oh man, no, what they tell you is go get your own. It's like we get offended. Use those same tax dollars that they're using because all of our tax dollars, and you get your Negro politician to do some work for a change and stop wasting all our goddamn time and money on trying to remove statues out of a state house in Texas, Tennessee, or whatever. Who gives a shit about a statue? It's the mindset. So you get the mindset together, then you can say, well, let me move this shit out of there, move this shit out of the way, or put it in the museum. Who cares? I mean, they had a whole movement, and that's how a lot of them got elected. We're going to get these uh, statues. Who gives a shit? I'm telling you, y'all keep electing these people. I mean, I'm telling you, for black men, if they don't mention about, we're going to dismantle this child support system. They don't, if they don't talk about that, don't vote for them. If they don't talk about dismantling the current child support system, do not vote for them. If they don't talk about having more money specifically aimed towards black boys, and, and if anybody who's a black politician say black and brown, do not vote for them. If any, because black females got it bad, women of color. We are not a people of color, fool. We are infinite by which other colors derive. Come on, somebody. See, if you read the scholars in the 90s, they would have taught you how to talk today. We right here listen to these stupid ass blacktivists and wokeivists sounding like a bunch of damn slaves. See, if you read the books of the scholars of the 60s and the 70s, we read about them in the 90s and got to meet them when they were still, they were like in their 50s and 60s then. They, was, they taught us the language of the white races and we know how to combat that language. These folks, you're talking about women of color. We're people of color and minorities, you fool. I told you we sound stupid as shit. <laughs> this shit is crazy. We're the first girls of color. Both of them look like Whippy Goldberg, their mama. Come on, of color. We are black folks by which other color, by which color derives. We are infinite. <sighs> Boy, y'all need some Dr. Claude. Well, I'm sorry. Some, uh, who is that? Who is that? Dr. Ben Yakahanan in your lives. Well, you know the next best thing to Dr. Ben, if you're in the Dallas area, how about connect with Brother Aswa Kwesi here in Dallas? He was the understudy, the assistant for years under Dr. Ben. When Dr. Ben passed away, Brother Kwesi, Aswa Kwesi, Kwesi took over. So his legacy continues. We want to learn about this stuff. Well, hell, we Hey, get off, get off these dumbass apps that got y'all watching dumb shit like P-Valley and Lovecraft this and 
all these shows that got black men having sex with white men and black men and, and all this kind of foolishness. Just got away from reading. We don't give a shit. And then we're wondering why they don't even do nothing new. They don't even do anything new on us. They keep doing the same shit. They, all they do is remix bullshit and throw it right in our face with Oh my god! I thought we were all in love. I thought we were all people, one people. Every other group is just moving on. Getting shit passed all in the House and the Senate. But anyway, y'all, I'm not going to believe this again. What the hell is voter suppression? Y'all ask these people, exactly. So you're saying that uh, if you don't have an uh, ID getting up to the door, you can't vote? Well, if that's the law, okay. So you're saying that we should be upset because they won't allow people to give out water bottles? Are you saying that because, okay... They gonna cut voting out at six and seven o'clock, and that's a problem. But you been voting for about two or three weeks before the goddamn thing. I like, come on. So you saying that they gonna be you gonna be upset? They are gonna try to hamper the mail-in vote when that shit need to be done away anyway? <laughs> Hell, get up. How about the old-fashioned way? People went up and went into there, put the information in the machine, and moved on. What you need to be concerned about are these lying-ass voting machines. Like in Memphis, Tennessee, they have something called Diebold. That's what you need to be worried about. These, and also make sure you have the right people that will monitor these old lying ass, these, these people who can manipulate these voting machines. Just get in there on one of these early voting days. Make sure they can keep the count. Have your people in place. And then on, uh, 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 on election day, you know, and, and it, it is the law that your employer is supposed to let you off anyway. So I don't understand what, we you know a lot of our old people where well, they have times in the mornings where they take old people. So that's where we organize it for stuff that actually matters. Y'all right here letting these folks get reelected. Durbin, what's up? Getting reelected on some bullshit that we can actually handle. Because remember, when our people were first released from slavery, they didn't have jack shit. And you, we, we were out here living in the days of iPhone 20. We acting just as helpless as the people who didn't have shit but rags. And they did more than what we claim that we can't do today. Come on, somebody. There's something wrong with niggas. I'm telling you, I ain't mean to use that word, but I'm sick of it. It's just weird. We think we moving on up and grooving. We stirring the pot in of debauchery. Shit is crazy. There's something wrong with niggas in this country. Hell. And I don't know it all, goddammit, but I do know something. He said, which group Goldberg uh, look like color purple? L not now, Claude. Not now. Uh, so, um, the thing is, uh, yeah, I know Whoopi got all her daughters about racial. I'm just saying if she actually had sex with a black man, those black girls look like Whoopi. I know Whoopi made sure that nothing else black was coming in her household by way of her vagina. We, I know that. I wouldn't give her no serious black card when I made that comparison. When I do that, I, I look at actual black people like Whoopi, Don Cheadle, me, you know, real black folks. I use them as examples because that's the black that... that Europe wants to get rid of, and black folks don't even like that kind of black, original black, with the real black features. They want everybody to look like El DeBarge and Mariah Carey and call them black. That's how we do. And we'll be fighting over it. No, that's Afro-Latina. That's, that's Afro- <laughs> But the bitch look like Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Where's the black in that? So, anywho, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> But the thing is, voter suppression, y'all need to find out. Go ahead and Google this stuff and find out what it actually is. And then read what they're talking about, where they got everybody in a frenzy. And these black activists are being corporately flown out everywhere to a march. And tell me, y'all point out any time in history when activists on behalf of black folks was f rolled in luxury, in luxury style to a goddamn march or, or an activist meeting. Malcolm. Marcus. Now, he was in parades because he had his own money. Now, they made money off the newspapers. He was independently making his own money. But don't no damn activists work for an Ivy League university for too long. <laughs> they, they don't. If you act there truly a black, a black activist and working at a Yale or Harvard or Stanford or whatever, you're not going to be there long. It's like any job. If you're on your job talking about black stuff, you're not going to be there long. 
So how these folks who talk about you know, racism and, and black suppression, but they get corporate funding from these white corporations that participate in the goddamn suppression of black folks. Can y'all help me make that make sense? And all these are all the people that get invited to the to the university to speak for ten to fifty thousand dollars a speech at the black colleges, but not the people who are doing the real work. They're not the ones who are invited. It's weird, and we as act like we don't even see this shit. They get Cadillac commercials and shit, but they're the activists. They get jobs at MSNBC making four hundred thousand dollars a year. Al Sharp. This is weird. So, but anyway, it's just me. I've always had this terrible behavior of pointing out the pink elephant in the black living room. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, and I try, even though I'm telling you, I've actively tried not to do this, but I guess if it's in you, it's in you. You can't help it. You're going to tell it. So, Voter suppression. Y'all find out what the hell that actually is and stop all of Stop this fake ass outrage. Because the people who are leading you to all the outrage, they know this some bullshit. Because what we need, the, the actual fight should be getting permanent voting rights. Not 20, every 25 years getting your rights voted on. And if y'all vote for any Negro to my run for state representative, city council, or any political seat, ask them about that. And also, Pose the question: What are your what's your view on child support? If you're a black male, and if they're not talking about, well, I'm, I have a plan in place to introduce to the house, or to the city council, or the county commission, that we need to, you know, two things: either try to dismantle the whole system, you know, with you know, bit by bit, or make child support payments equal the men and the women, meaning. You know how women always say in these old beta male punk ass dudes, well, you know, she ain't make it by herself. You know, making a child take 50 50. Y'all remember hearing that, right? Y'all hear it every day you bring up child support. Oh, you cows don't want to take care of your responsibilities. All that old lame ass shit. How about this? Under, under that belief system, that means if it was made by two people, how come two people are, should, are not being ordered by these lame ass judges to pay? Meaning, see, I just bring too much logic and I bring accountability to everybody, not just on black men. She ain't make it by herself. If he's forced to pay $500 a month, she should be forced to pay $500 a month. Now, you say, well, Your Honor, I can't afford it. And the judge should say, well, what you doing getting pregnant if you can't afford $500 a month? And it should be, he should be automatically offered 50-50 custody. And if she real messed up, well, give them full custody. See, that's what your that's what your black politicians need to be fighting for: equality for real, not superiority for the women. But see, everybody knows the politician, all of them, and your politician and your preacher, they act like party promoters. Ladies get in free at eleven o'clock. Fellas, you pay ten and twenty dollars all goddamn night. Get to the club, the little punk ass DJ. Fellas, fellas, buy these beautiful ladies a drink. Wait a minute, she ain't have to pay to get in this motherfucker. She got twenty dollars. She can buy her own drink. Don't they look beautiful, fellas? Instead of them saying, ladies, ladies, the guys that worked all week, they had to pay to come in here. They got haircuts. They look nice. Ladies, buy the fellas a drink. Now that would be revolutionary, and that would be real manhood. And, I, and I'm continuing to press these DJs and promote party promoters. Some mess with the party promoters. I know I'm going all over the place, but can y'all stop um, renting these white venues? Then they use their white bartenders and mistreat your black your black patrons that come in there following you. That's, I always found it to be weird. These black promoters, party promoters, rent these white spaces, and then they have their white bartenders handling black folks. <laughs> look, man, look. I know, I know it's not just me. So, uh, oh yeah, the fight is real out here. Voter suppression, come on. Y'all gonna find out what the fuck that actually is. You're gonna realize you've been made a fool of. And also, your black politicians ain't shit. Now it's already given, we already know the white ones ain't doing it, but we, we got that. 
So the black one's supposed to be the better alternative, correct? No. It's just like having a black police officer. If they don't change the entire system, well, what you guess what the black cop is doing? Going along to get along. <laughs> got it? Don't tell me no such thing as a good well, We got a lot of good cops knowing there's no such thing as a good cop. Because they know the white cops who are acting a fool. They're, they're culpable in the murder, culpable in the beating, culpable of the laying of false evidence on somebody, planting of evidence. They're culpable in that because they don't tell you. They go under the white blue wall of silence. So don't tell me about no goddamn good cop. Because a white man, a white cop will let you off with a, with a warning just like the black ones do. Here, a lot of times you get more passes from the white cop. If we're going to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> But we're not going to be honest because it doesn't fit the narrative. So, uh, anyway, y'all, I've spoken a little extra long because, you know, when, I, when I'm trying to shut it down, <laughs> something else comes up and I, I want to do y'all like that. And uh, I got some more water to drink. But again, if you hadn't found out, there's a short story that I have. It's always for sale. It's, it's called The Greatest Pain I've Ever Felt. And, it, and it's a uh, conversation with my absent biological father who never wanted to be found. And it was an actual conversation I had with this jackass. And so um, I found out about him by, by accident at age 22 years old. And I, uh, you know, it was just a conversation I was having with my aunt. Rest in peace, my aunt Pat. And she told me, broke the, I guess, told the family secret or one of the family secrets. And, um, and she uh, put me in shock for the next 10 years, I guess. And, uh, and so I got information on, called him and all this, and, you know, just very bland. And you never wanted to meet. He'll just say, let's let fate handle that. That's all. You have other children. Yeah, maybe I can meet them. No, I don't think that'd be a good idea. We'll let fate handle that. And so I decided in 2008, 4.30, 425, 430 p.m. on Christmas Day, December 25th. I decided I, I looked up names, found five addresses, and told my brother, let's go, man. We're finna go to all these houses. One of these has to be his. And the first one that I picked turned out to be his, rang the doorbell, he came through. I'd already heard my, my voice on the other end of the phone. Then I saw my body come out of that damn door. <laughs> and he said, well, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hey, what's going on? And he's like, so how'd you find me? I said, you know, Google Map Map Quest. He says, well, well, I have to give you an A for effort because I've worked aggressively over the years to prevent you from ever finding me. So if you'd like to read this story and all that, that all the twists and turns, emotional twists and turns, it's only $10. It comes only in a PDF form. So if you hit me on the Cash App, dollar sign, Rico the Opinionist, O-P-I-N-I-O-N-I-S-T, Rico with opinion and I-S-T on the end. Uh, either PayPal or Cash App, please send an email address so I can email you your copy of the PDF short story. Cool? Thank y'all so much. Again, research that damn voter suppression and get the emotionalism out of it. And what, you, what we should be thinking about is how come we always have to have our rights voted on every 25 years and then what exactly are they suppressing? You mean they're making, they're taking, so they're making it uncomfortable. You can listen to the playback, Kenyatta. How are you? <laughs> hey, Kenyatta. Check out the playback. But um, uh, check out what that really means because all these folks got it all in attention. Oh, my God. They're trying to suppress the vote. But they ain't never say in the black vote. Pay attention. Pay attention to the language. Are they trying to end the black vote or just this? Uh, decrease some of the comforts of voting. I don't give a fuck about decreasing the comforts of voting as long as the voting is not taken away. Well, you know, that could lead to that. I doubt it. Because after, after y'all hear me say this and y'all spread it, y'all gonna redirect your politicians and your black activists and woke activists to say, hey, stop talking about that shit. Let's talk about how we can get that. When Republicans bring it up again, that they want to end the 25-year deal. That's not ending vote. That means they're trying to make you a full-fledged American with a right to vote. Because white folks have full-fledged American rights. Immigrants have full-fledged American rights. And black people have to wait every 25 years to make sure their voting right is recertified. That don't make no goddamn sense. All these intelligent Negroes, they parade on all these goddamn liberal shows. 
CNN, MSNBC, and all this shit. ABC, CBS, all this shit. They never say this. Y'all start challenging these dumbass black politicians. Now, these Negroes, I want to run for city council. I want to run for state representative. Ask them real questions. And black men in closing, if the Negro politician does not talk about equalizing child support, meaning make the woman pay and the man pay the same $500 or ending the child support system altogether, don't vote for them. If, if they never mention, I want to try to get some funding strictly for uh, mental health and child protection for black boys and black men, do not vote for them. You make sure you get somebody who's who's out in the state house or the or the, the federal house, may house and senate, Make sure you get somebody who's fighting for your issues. I think black men need to have a coalition meeting to find out exactly what our issues are. Ask me, I tell you. I've been a black man, a grown man, since I was 18 years old. I can tell you what our issues are. There's no funding coming our way as black men. There's no, no law to protect us and make us, a, make us a protected class. And the most shit happened to us, but we're the least protected the least respected, the most slighted, the most disregarded. Hell. The most sacrificed. So we need to start talking like that. Again, black men, I don't give a damn if you're black Greek, black Christian, black Muslim, we're going to have to coalesce. Hell. And we need to become a political group. And again, I thank y'all so much for checking your boy out. Please read the playback. My book is Rico. I'm on the greatest pain ever felt. The short story. $10 cash. Have Rico their penis. Check it out. Send me an email when you make the payment. We'll talk again. Y'all be cool. Rico and his opinions. I am out. Peace.